Hi everyone. So um, I suggest just waiting for several minutes uh, for others because we have about several hundreds uh, of people today. So I think let's wait just about three or four minutes. Okay, uh, let's start, I think. Yeah, uh, so hi all. My name is uh, Nikita Gorovsky and I'm working in travel payouts for almost five years. So in this webinar, me and my colleagues will try to explain how to earn money on travel traffic. Uh, and um, this is uh, the first webinar in our affiliate network. So uh, if you like this idea, uh, we will continue making these webinars um, in uh, several uh, months. Uh, so, to prevent any connection difficulties, uh, I think it's a better idea to turn off uh, the camera uh, and um, start showing my presentation. Okay, great. Uh, by the way, the video of this webinar will be available in your personal accounts uh, soon after the end of the webinar. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the special section in the right sidebar. Uh, we will answer and look for them um, there. So uh, the main question uh, is uh, how much you can earn on travel traffic. Uh, let me show you. Uh, our top 10 affiliate payouts for April. Uh, as you can see, you can be quite successful with travel websites as well. Um, what is uh, travel payouts? Uh, basically, travel payouts uh, is an affiliate program for uh, two of our products. Uh, the first one is a flight meta search engine called uh, JetRadar, and the second one is a hotel look. A hotels meta search engine. Uh, 
Uh, what is a meta search? Uh, we get prices from different uh, agencies uh, and OTAs, uh, compare these prices and show the lowest price uh, to uh, the visitor. Uh, and um, uh, in a few weeks, uh, I think uh, we will integrate uh, other advertisers, uh, for example, rental cars uh, and home away. So you can uh, earn even more money on the same amount of traffic. Okay, this is our Flights Meta Search Engine. Uh, as you see, all our tools support different languages and regions. Uh, so you can develop your own website in the area where the competition is quite low or in the area uh, that you know best. This is um, our hotels meta search. Um, it takes prices from Booking.com, Agoda, and uh, other agencies, uh, compare them, uh, and um, uh, this is uh, how it works, basically. For our um, affiliates, we create a special solution called White Label. Uh, now you can offer flights and hotels uh, directly on your website. So your visitors uh, don't have to leave your website. Uh, you can customize um, footer and head header with your logo uh, and uh, create uh, your own website. Uh, white label uh, supports uh, adaptive design uh, so it can be mm, uh, best viewed uh, on uh, uh, mobile phones and uh, tablets. So, in other words, White Label is your own travel uh, search engine. And the question is uh, how to drive traffic from your website uh, to your White Label. Uh, for example, uh, you have um, a, travel blog, a travel blog and you need to promote flights and hotels uh, in your articles, in your posts. You need uh, a special entry point for your visitors. Uh, and we have them. We have uh, perfect um, search, in, search uh, widgets uh, and search forms, mm -hmm. as well as a calendar of low prices. Uh, specific uh, hotels widgets uh, and many more. You can see them on the slide. What is more important, uh, they are available in a special WordPress plugin. So if you have a WordPress blog or a content project, uh, you can integrate these um, tools, these uh, widgets, uh, just in a few clicks. And how can you drive traffic to your website? There are several ways. Uh, basically, you can drive uh, organic traffic from search engines, social networks, or buy traffic in pay-per-click systems. Uh, of course, I recommend uh, the first option uh, because it is uh, much cheaper uh, and uh, the traffic you get from this channel uh, we'll have a better CTR. Uh, to get a lot of organic traffic, you need to improve search engine optimization on your website and pay a lot of attention to the content. Uh, you can generate the content uh, with uh, our data API. There's some statistic information on flights, airlines, etc. So on the slide, you can see a small screenshot uh, of the whole web page. Uh, that is fully generated on data uh, get from the API. Uh, so here we can see some statistical data uh, about, um, uh, about prices uh, and uh, many others. My colleague uh, Alex uh, will tell you some more information about content strategy uh, later. So, 
it is not a secret uh, that our top affiliates that you can see uh, on the slide, uh, that they are working with um, mobile apps. Uh, but creating a mobile app is a kind of rocket science for many of us. For this case, our mobile department creates a special SDK uh, that can help you to create your own travel application in a few hours. It is fully customizable and supports both Android and iOS platform. Uh, and if you create your application on this mobile SDK, you will earn a um, lifetime commission uh, on a revenue share model, lifetime. Uh, and uh, yes, this SDK uh, supports um, flights, hotels, and you can also place um, some, um, some advertisement. Uh, Vice President of our mobile department, Ivan, will tell you some more information in the next hour. So that's it. That was a short introduction uh, to just to, to give some basic information about our network, about possibilities you have, about our tools. Uh, and now uh, let me introduce uh, our next speaker, uh, Alex Techalova. She is a great specialist in digital marketing, uh, and uh, she will just uh, give you some really cool information. And if you have, uh, if you need some more information about our tools, you can visit our blog uh, and our help desk. You can see links uh, on the slide. That's it. Alex, you're welcome. Thank you, Nikita. That will uh, help you uh, receive <clears throat> organic traffic and rank your site well in Google. And so, uh, okay. And so, uh, well, but I'm sure when you uh, see the title of my, well, my topic of my slide, how to create an effective content strategy you're wondering uh, why do you need um, it uh, because when we talk about content strategy it's mostly related to uh, brands uh, to um, to loyal community when we want to build loyal community and so it's about understanding audience needs and do we really need to do that when we well when, when we need to generate um, traffic for affiliate websites um, uh, actually, uh, we decided to take a look at this problem from different angles and I'll tell you that, um, first of all, uh, we decided to approach uh, 50 well-known affiliate experts and uh, among those uh, were those guys like uh, Jennifer Sakoff, Adam Ramel, Brian Dean, Marcus Sarek, Oliver Ralph. Matthew Woodward. I'm, I'm sure uh, some of those names uh, are familiar to you. Well, actually, I know some of those guys as well. I had a pleasure to speak at the same conference with Brian Dean. And, uh, to, to, well, yeah. and so, um, uh, talking about uh, this survey, so we decided to ask a couple of questions. Uh, uh, experts, and the very first question was about uh, links. And, well, not particularly about links, it's better to say that it was about um, uh, the best uh, strategy that uh, on every generate, um, well, will let you get more clicks and for sure conversions when uh, you're going to send uh, traffic from your, from your website to, uh, to uh, an advertiser. And so uh, experts, uh, they confirmed that allocating links and relevant content, and that's what I feel um, is also the best uh, approach here. So they confirmed that that will uh, generate more clicks, uh, and as uh, as uh, and then for sure conversions. So uh, that's the first uh, thing that uh, that's the first question. And the second one, we ask uh, about the best uh, traffic sources. Uh, so which of the following affiliate uh, site traffic sources are the best, uh, also in terms of generating visitors? 
and they claim that search organic that will be the best one then we see search paid uh, on the third place actually we see social and the rest of others so uh, these two questions uh, they uh, well actually they give us uh, the idea that content is really important here because you can't uh, well there is no way to allocate a link in real content if you don't have anything on your website if you don't have uh, posts articles uh, or any written text and so and from other side uh, there is no way to rank in google uh, without having content because uh, you need uh, keywords uh, and the right search terms carefully selected by you that will be also uh, allocated in your content and by those keywords you're going to appear in google so uh but that's all about content which is not actually um, a strategy and that's uh, that, that simply tell us that we need content uh but moving further uh i have a quick question to you guys uh, so, uh, do you think that you can rank well in Google without links? We'd love to hear a yes, no, whatever you want to. Uh, <coughs> and so, uh, basically, my answer to this question is no, you can't rank uh, in Google without links. There is no way. And uh, But also, uh, we decided to... Uh, analyzed uh, a travel affiliate sites in order to receive a clear answer to this question because uh, well that's my opinion that's your opinion but um, we need data uh, to prove our statements and that's why we analyzed a bit less than uh, 400 travel affiliate websites um, in order to uh, receive a clear answer to this question and we found that the minimum number for referring domain should be a bit over 130 and if to be accurate 136 that's the average number so basically um, uh, everything tells us that in order to rank in google well we need a strategy that allows us to generate content that will <clears throat> uh, that will be linkable by other sites so and that's why I want to today uh, show you a step-by-step -step process of creating an effective content strategy that's why we need a strategy here a well-developed content strategy that will guarantee that all your posts will get enough links and this allows you to get a sufficient flow of organic visitors and to generate money for sure so that's why i want to share with you this three step process really simple that uh, helps you uh, build content that will be uh, first of all primarily focused on generating links so uh, just um, uh, to note and just uh, to, to, to to let you know that I'm not going to talk today about uh, private uh, block networks, so PBNs and any other ways of uh, getting links that um, involve, uh, uh, let's say, unnatural ways of getting links, of acquiring links, because it, um, well, uh, so being honest, uh, those all strategies that uh, they lead to penalization and I don't like it because what well, I think if you invest in something it's better to have it um, for, for let's say uh, it's better to have it for a quite long time which makes sense here and if we are going to talk about content and about generating links through content I think it makes sense not to be penalized um, by Google and that's why I don't want to touch those strategies here today and so we'll see how you can do it and also uh, my personal specialization I'm really good in building links through content 
And if you go and search for my articles on Search Engine Journal on Moss Blog, you will find that I mostly write about those strategies. And so that's what I do for my clients. And that's why I want to share this with you with some, uh, well, definitely some uh, lazy targeted and affiliate market. And we'll see. So uh, talking about uh, this process. Uh, so first of all, start with analyzing your competitive landscape. That allows you to understand what's going on, uh, how many links do you need to generate in order to run by a particular search query, and <clears throat> well, uh, and whether it's possible to run by this uh, search query. Then you need to build an outreach list because uh, that's um, a core principle of uh, link building through content because you need to outreach other people in order to get links. And so the last one, you need to select the right strategy to generate links so that the, that will be the right strategy for an outreach, actually, how you are going to start your conversation uh, with, with other sites and um, that's uh, more or less related to uh, the final um, part of this process. So let's start from, from the very beginning. So competitive landscape analysis. Uh, so the first step will be um, you need to check whether uh, a selected by you topic has enough search queries. So whether so whether users uh, they are really searching, and whether you have enough, uh, and whether it has a, this topic has enough uh, search volume. And the second one will be find what other sites write about uh, a topic uh, you selected. And the last one will be discover the number of links you need to have to rank well for a selected topic. Um, let me show how I do it normally, and so you'll, uh, you'll find that it's pretty easy. So uh, here is a SEMrush uh, keyword tool where you can uh, type in any keyword. So, for instance, here's a uh, flight to Cuba, which was actually uh, they, they like one year ago. Yeah, uh, they started to uh, do it from US to Cuba, and so I, I've known that, that, that there there is kind kind of a growth um, of uh, searches uh, in this particular niche, and so. <clears throat> Basically, uh, why I recommend to you this tool, um, because what you can do here, you can here type in any uh, topic, uh, well, it will be a search query in our case, and uh, this tool um, groups all the keywords uh, by, um, so as you can see, uh, it's here, it's grouped by the number of keywords uh, that <clears throat> a particular uh, yeah, so that, that's the number of group keywords, I'm sorry. Uh, and also, and also there is uh, uh, all, all the keywords uh, which you can find in a particular group. So you can click uh, on that site uh, in that tool and see there all the keywords that associated with the particular group. Um, and also, what I love here, you can see total uh, search volume of a particular group of keywords, and as well as uh, the average difficulty of promotion. So here is uh, what does it mean, average difficulty of promotion? That's uh, calculated um, inside SEMrush, and it points out uh, how hard um, it will be for you to run by this uh, to run by this group of keywords in Google. On the top two, uh, in the top two pages. But uh, uh, well, what is SimRush doesn't really take into account here uh, that um, you might also <clears throat> uh, that uh, the uh, that the number of referring domains. Uh, basically, you also need uh, to take this uh, into consideration when you are going to validate this. But I'll show you later about this. And also, you can use Bassuma, uh, which is quite good uh, for uh, analyzing topics. Uh, so if we, uh, let's imagine we want to discover uh, what other sites writing about flights to Cuba. And so we can see uh, what kind of, let's say, articles um, are published and uh, were, were actually were published. And um, <clears throat> Mm. That gives us an idea 
what kind of content we need to produce um, <clears throat> in order to get um, links because the content, uh, as you can see here, there is a number of links, here a column and social shares. So this content is linkable and shareable. Well, not particular all content that you're going to find in, in Basuma for sure, but <clears throat> it helps you uh, figure out what kind of topics you need to cover and so what you can, well, in general, um, write about. Uh, and so the last one, when you know what kind of uh, what kind of topic you want to cover, and you know that there is enough search volume behind those topics, and uh, well, let's say uh, SMRush tells you that it's not so uh, hard to promote uh, your site um, by this keyword, the difficulty isn't very high. Uh, still, uh, you need to check how many links uh, do you need in order to rank <coughs> uh, uh, in Google, in order to rank well at Google. So what I do normally, I take all the uh, domains, um, uh, well, let's say here it's better to say URLs, and also I look then at domains as well, of those URLs. So I take all URLs uh, that appear by a particular keyword, and um, that's what you can take from SMRush or simply search in Google. Or uh, if you have a lot of keywords and um, if you if you have an access to any position uh, tracker, when you can track uh, keywords position, keywords positions. Uh, you can just uh, put the list of keywords you want to um, you want to scrape and get those URLs and after this you can go to Ahrefs or Majestic and uh, all uh, both uh, both of those tools um, they have a um, batch analysis tool that allows you to uh, proceed at once uh, uh, a good number of uh, URLs. So uh, in HS particularly, you can check at once up to 200 URLs and in Majestic even up to 10,000. Well, here it's, uh, in this example, um, I use HS, but it, it just, you know, depends on what you prefer. And actually Majestic, it costs a little bit less than HS. So if you compare their pricing. So basically, you take all those URLs and then go to Ahrefs and you check uh, uh, the referring domains of those URLs and then, as well as uh, those sites are referring domains. So as you can see, two columns here. The one that's uh, the, the, the site referring domains and the second one that's URL referring domains. Why, we need, uh, why do we need these uh, numbers? Because um, here, are, from this column, we can learn uh, how many links we need to have in order to rank um, uh, well in Google. So basically, as I can see, it's around, um, I would say, roughly, maybe 20, 30 links. Uh, that's what uh, we need to reach in order to rank by this particular keyword. Just I remember, it was flight to Cuba which is pretty generic actually, um, just because of that, uh, it requires uh, more efforts. Not sure how it's going to be good in terms of generating money because it's pretty generic as I've already mentioned. And also looking at this because uh, you, you need to take uh, into, considera into consideration not only uh, URLs because uh, you need also to take a look at the power uh, of uh, domains, how powerful they are, uh, because uh, if you're not going to take a look at this uh, table and you only make your estimation based on this, then you can make a mistake. And basically you can produce um, your content that will be targeted on a topic that um, you won't be able to run because domains as you can see here, they all have a pretty uh, big uh, backlink profile. So they have a lot of referring domains. 
So that's why I would say that uh, I'm not going to target this uh, particular keyword and it's better to find something uh, which uh, will be uh -huh. well not no not really it, it's not a blank screen Nikita can you see a blank screen as well oh it's not blank hey Mark do you still see a blank screen it's good here um uh, well, uh, Mark, I have no idea what I can do right now, uh, but uh, I can share my slides after my presentation. What I can recommend to you, Mark, um, you can refresh, uh, well, can you refresh a session? Because if I'm going to refresh my session, it's going to take, um, okay, a little square, yeah, I, I don't know how to move it, 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 it just, uh, yeah I, I i i have no idea how can i move it from here no it's just sound uh, yeah i'd love to move it from here but have no idea um no i'm sorry um if i do this might be better it, it, it's better if it's full screen no um okay so i can try full screen which might be better for you guys uh, I'm sorry about uh, that um, black square. So basically, and uh, so I was talking about uh, these two columns. And so, yeah, uh, well, the data, the data tell us that uh, this particular keyword might be not the best uh, option for us. So, uh, and by looking at those numbers, you can spot the best keywords and topics for you. And then we are moving to the second stage when we are talking about generating links, closer to generating links, but not necessarily because that's a preparation stage when we are going to build a list of websites. Um, and so we are going firstly to start with websites that link to your type of content. So what does it mean here? That you need to find websites that uh, previously were linking to similar content. And I'll show you how you can do it. That is, that uh, more or less pretty easy um, to uncover and the second here it's travel niche website with domain size close to your own um, so here uh, I would just recommend simply to search for bloggers that um, uh, that have recently started their blogs about travel and so you might find them in, in, on the Facebook groups, uh, in LinkedIn, and those uh, people, uh, they uh, will be interested in linking to you, um, let's say, uh, a way more than the rest of others. So, uh, and talking about uh, building a list of sites that uh, have relevant, um, that, I'm sorry, that was linked into similar content. Uh, in that case, you can use Sumo, and that's the column that you need to be uh, focused on here. So basically, you need to uh, collect all those URLs that have links. And so that's uh, the number of referring domain that a particular, uh, well, let's say URL or a particular content has. Uh, then you can also uh, build this list by uh, scraping Google. So you can use a position tracking tool or any kind of, um, well, uh, well, I can recommend AccuRanker, which uh, doesn't cost a lot. It's actually around 30, maybe 30 bucks per month, where you can just simply um, add all the keywords uh, that you want to scrape from Google. And it's really, uh, and it's going to provide you <clears throat> a result uh, very fast, what I love about AccuRanker. Or you can use SEMrush or any kind of tool that you normally use for this. Um, and basically, you need those URLs because you're going to look at uh, referring domains of, of those URLs as well. And so what you need to do here, if you, uh, if you can use a Ahrefs or Majestic API, that definitely will uh, speed up this process. 
So, or you can do it manually. That's well, what I normally do actually. Uh, because, uh, well, why I do it manually? Because uh, I can do it also automatically because I have uh, an API access to both tools. But uh, here are the thing that when uh, I go and check uh, those links, I also try to understand the reasons why a, a particular domain uh, made uh, uh, edit a link to other domain. So uh, by looking at uh, but by analyzing this data, it helps me create the right outreach email because I do it uh, mostly uh, manually. But it depends on the number of uh, links that you need. If we talk about 20, 30 links, yes, it's doable. If we talk about 100, 200 links, it might make sense to automate this uh, in order not to waste your time because uh, in reality, yes, if you do it uh, automatically, the response rate will be uh, a lot lower, but uh, if we imagine that you can send, I don't know, 1,000 emails, or three emails at once, and receive uh, even, uh, I don't know, 5%, uh, that will be your response rate, it still will be fairly enough. So it depends on, um, let's say, on the process itself, on your resources and how you can organize it. So yeah, I'll do it mostly manually, but uh, let's say <clears throat> I would imagine that for some particular needs, I would prefer to do it automatically. And so you, you just, you know, you check those links and create an outreach list. Um, and the last, one, uh, the last one step here, it's uh, you need to select the right strategy to work with those sites. So basically, if you do it automatically, I would recommend to uh, just uh, make different tiers. For those that are really small, you can send just generic email and don't care a lot. Uh, for those that have, let's say, uh, kind of authority, so they are not so small and they have uh, a good uh, backlink profile, you can try to uh, well, I don't know, you can try to send a personal message, for instance. You can try to uh, connect with them uh, via LinkedIn, or you can try um, <coughs> uh, to involve them somehow in your content. So basically, if you are interested in finding emails, I recommend to use a tool that is called, that is called Hunter.io. Um, so I'll share that. Uh, that tool name uh, in the chat, so you can grab it. And basically, it also has an API. So what you can do, you can automatically get the list of emails that are associated uh, with those domains, and it's uh, quite powerful. Uh, what you can do uh, also, if you spend your time on analyzing those domains, you can spot those that allows you to write a guest post which might be an option as well, because why I love guest posts? Because what you can do, uh, you can allocate the right anchor text. So, well, when we talk about, uh, let's say, links that are generated with the help of outreach, you can't control anchor text. And sometimes, in some particular cases, uh, one link with the right out, uh, anchor text uh, with the right anchor text uh, will be uh, the same as 10 links uh, with, I don't know, any random anchor text. So it really depends uh, on a particular situation, but uh, that's the reason why I love guest posts. But otherwise, it's quite, um, it's quite expensive. Because uh, if we think about an average price per guest post, you need a round spend like if you hire a copywriter, let's imagine it's like starting from 50 to 70 bucks on a post. If we don't talk about some, like, you know, spammy websites, uh, well, if we talk about websites, that's uh, more or less check what they publish. And uh, that's why uh, I, well, wouldn't recommend uh, to use guest posts uh, quite a lot. Also, um, uh, might be a good option here, quoting an expert. Um, so if you have a good piece 
where you can add an, uh, a quote from an expert. That's what you should definitely do. And basically, that uh, also might help you generate links because when you're going to outreach a piece where you have a quote from an expert, it's going to uh, be um, uh, scored higher rather than a piece with no quotes and no, uh, no experts. Just because that's a human nature, we we just you know we score everything uh, based on uh, um, based on those things that are pretty visible, and we don't need to spend a lot of time. So that's why um, our brain it automatically uh, make those associations. Which is like if you know that expert, that's a good piece. If I don't know those actual, that's uh, I don't know random piece. But there it is. So basically, uh, besides, uh, well, uh, the chance that those, uh, expert, the, those experts can link back to you, uh, that also might help you uh, generate links. And also, well, talking about uh, more generic ways of, uh, of uh, getting things done, that might be in list of useful resources and the end of a post, for instance, that you can update on a regular basis. So, for instance, you do an outreach email that looks like, um, hey, I create this piece where I have uh, a list of useful resources and I found this content on your website and I want to add a link to your piece. If you can uh, link me back uh, or something like that, whatever it is, or you can just leave it open, and then if a person say, "Oh yeah, I want you to add this link," you can just, just you know send an email back and say, "Okay, then can you link me back?" So something like that. It depends. Uh, well, I received tons of those emails asking uh, asking me like you know starting from, "Can you please uh, add this piece uh, for?" I don't know, 50 bucks um, that I'll pay for you on your website and ending up let's exchange links. People like, you know, tend to tell that, oh no, we don't exchange links, but in reality everyone uh, does it. Uh, there is an option which uh, seems to be uh, not so easy to deliver, but uh, that works pretty good in terms of generating links, because other people want to, uh, well, they what I found, they want to really uh, link to those pieces, as well as uh, experts that uh, were involved in those roundups. They also um, tend to link to those uh, pieces. So it's about writing roundup posts with the experts. So what you need, you need to create one or two questions asking them something about, I don't know, what their thoughts about, uh, I don't know, particular things. Um, I don't know, flights to Cuba or whatever it is. And so you can then uh, create those roundup and it's going well, definitely uh, those roundups, they are um, pretty easy to outreach as well. And the other way is uh, creating a page with that lists fastness. Well, unfortunately, uh, in this page, the, the only issue with this page is that it's going to generate you links uh, in the majority of cases directly on your main page, which is uh, not so good um, because you, you, know, you, you also, well, for sure, you also need a link to your main page, but uh, it's better to have uh, links also to your content. But that might be a starting point, so you first exchange uh, links with partners on main pages and then you also can exchange uh, links um, uh, yeah, uh, that uh, will be uh, related to particular pieces. Um, well, it's just pretty basic. You're going to link to uh, other posts in order to get a link. So basically what you do here, uh, what I recommend. So first of all, it's better to uh, prepare uh, some kind of uh, Mm, so it's better to send an email to a person, um, uh, to, to let's say to a website uh, to which you want to link to. Uh, the reason that is going to uh, make some kind of, uh, that will be your preparation state, so you will figure out whether a person is, I don't know, interested in having this thing, so you can say like, you know what, uh, I prepare content and I, I'd love to add a link to your post, which I think is, is a great one and blah, 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 and so, and then if this person say, oh, yeah, cool, thank you very much for that, and um, 
everything like that, you can say, oh, by the way, uh, I've noticed that you have uh, this piece or like, you know, you might uh, also want to link to this content on my website or something like that. So you need to start a conversation and uh, uh, it, it's like kind of manipulation here. If I positively respond to an email and say, ah, thank you very much for doing that, it's, it's uh, uh, much harder to then say like, no, I'm not going to do anything for you. So that's a uh, kind of psychology here. And uh, also, uh, as an option here, I might be partnering with other um, one other site to deliver a post. Um, that's a, a quite a popular strategy when you partner with someone else in order to deliver, please generate more links uh, because you can uh, do an outreach together um, so you can team up for that, uh, as well as you can make an interesting, I don't know, kind of survey or something like that that will allow you to generate more links as a result uh, of this. So those are really uh, some kind of ideas that will uh, help you frame your conversation and send the right messages uh, to your outreach list and that will help you uh, think of this process in the most strategic way and so I believe uh, that should help you um, acquire links faster and uh, more effectively. And also, um, I think uh, when you know how to frame uh, your process, and that's uh, when you do everything in order to reach um, a goal that you know that well, I have this goal and everything works for this goal. And so I believe my process that uh, I've shown you, it's really focused on reaching a particular goal, getting uh, acquiring links and so and also ranking in Google because you are going to check the landscape as well as understand uh, how much effort do you need in order to rank in Google well. Because if you don't take into, consider, into, into consideration all those, uh, all those issues, uh, it's going to be very, very hard for you to rank in Google well and uh, receive a stable flow from uh, organic traffic. Uh, and that's our final goal. And thank you very much uh, for being with us. And thank you very much. Uh, for staying here on. and um, if you have any questions, I uh, um, I will be happy to answer. But I believe there those questions they are related to Nikita. Yeah, I don't see questions to my side. Oh yeah, I see questions. Hold on. Um. Mm. Okay. So basically, the difference between follow and no follow link. So here is uh, well, the difference between follow and no follow link is pretty obvious. When we talk about follow link, they are they are staying in the traffic juice, so the authority of domain uh, to your let's say to where they're linking to, and no follow doesn't do that. Uh, but, uh, well, from some point, uh, I've noticed that um, um, that follow and no follow links, they, they sometimes they work in the same way. So basically, um, if you can get no follow link, it's also good, I would say. So it's, uh, it, it, it really depends uh, uh, on, on how it's structured. So for instance, um, I don't know, guys, if you have ever noticed, but if you go on Forbes website uh, and you uh, go there and start to click on different links, you will find that sometimes they add uh, uh, an additional redirect. They are not only no follow, but also they add a redirect that, um, like, you know, protecting Forbes from spammy links. So if a contributor at some point will add a link to a bet website they will be um, yeah uh, so they're they are going to be uh, they are going to stay safe from this link so I would say 
when we talk about follow and no follow, no follow links is okay. But when a link has a redirect, that's a bad link, I would say, because it's not sending anything to a domain. It's just a technical link that a user can click and you will get a referral traffic, but that's it. So no value from uh, from a SEO perspective. Um, okay. No, I am sorry, but there we had no way to remove this black rectangle. Um, so, uh, Sebastian. I was talking about how you can uh, structure a content strategy um, in the way that you are not going to produce content that uh, won't be uh, ranking in Google. So you need to uh, understand the competitive landscape. So basically uh, check uh, whether um, the URLs that appear um, in Google, they uh, so they allow you to rank. Uh, what I mean here uh, uh, by uh, allow you to rank. So how many referring domains uh, do they have? You need to know because uh, uh, that will be a, a goal that you need to reach in order to rank in Google by the same keyword. Also, you need to take into consideration whether those domains are also uh, have a power, uh, a lot of uh, backlinks that are referring to, like you know, to other pages as well, because that's also um, preventing you from ranking well uh, if you don't have the same size of domain. So. Uh, yeah, basically, it, it's more or less about this. And so when you, know, let's imagine, like, you know, you want to run for a particular keyword. And you know that you need to get, uh, well, you analyze uh, what kind of URLs in terms of uh, uh, their, um, uh, so you analyze uh, the URL that uh, appear in Google. And you know that on average, uh, they have uh, 20 links. So that's your target here. And also, you know that uh, those uh, domains, uh, they are not big. So uh, the URLs uh, uh, that um, appear of those domains, they are not big. So basically, you know that that's an opportunity. And you are not going to waste your time. And you will make it in, it in a strategical way. So basically, each time you're going to produce any content on your site, you will know how many links you need to acquire. And uh, you also uh, will be sure that it's going to generate uh, you traffic. Uh, also, uh, I was talking about how you can generate those links. So basically, uh, some approaches that will help you um, yeah, acquire those links. And that's it. So, okay, thank you, Alex. Thank you a lot. It was very interesting. Uh, and uh, let me remind you that um, the video of uh, this webinar will be available soon after the end of the webinar. Uh, and you can, you will be able to watch the whole webinar. And uh, I think that we also uh, upload uh, a presentation uh, from our speakers to our blog, and you can download them. Uh, so uh, now i like to welcome uh, Ivan. Uh, he is the vice president in our mobile department. My name is uh, Ivan Kozlov, and uh, I'm VP Mobile here at Sales, uh, Jet Raider, Hotlook, and of course, Railway House, one of the biggest travel affiliate networks in the world. So, um, Today I'm going to tell you about one of our main products I'm responsible for called Travel SDK. Um, so let's start. <clears throat> so first of all, I want to explain you what Travel SDK actually is. Uh, Travel SDK is uh, some kind of special module which can be used to integrate flights or hotel search engine into your existing app, like Travel Guide to Triplane right now or it can be used to build your own standalone travel search app. 
Um, so uh, we do have a lot of partners who use our travel SDK. Uh, in total, they built more than 200 mobile apps, did more than 3.5 million search and 50K, 15K bookings in April. It's quite enough, right? And the biggest SDK affiliate earns more than 20K a month and total SDK payout in April was approximately $65,000. So, um, as you might know, uh, we do have two monetization models in our travel SDK. Uh, so you can earn money with travel payouts, helping your users to find the best flights and uh, hotel deals. And um, you can get paid for certain ads using Cooper Deal programmatic mediation platform, uh, which is integrated into our SDK. Uh, so how much you actually can earn with uh, our solution? Well, um, usually we pay our partners from 50 to 70% of our profit. So it's approximately $6 per flight and $20 per hotel booking. Um, many partners ask us uh, how much we can earn um, if we get 100 installs or let's say 1,000 installs. Unfortunately, I have no answer on that question. It, it depends on the traffic, uh, on the quality, uh, on the geos you have and so on. Um, I look through statistics we have and I can say that apps earn from $500 to $2,500. Uh, to $2, monthly if they have uh, 1,000 daily average users. In my example, 500 earns the app which promotes low-cost flights worldwide and 2.5k earns the app which is focused on Australian customers, for example. So you see the difference, right? DAO is the daily average users. <clears throat> yes, daily, uh, daily active users. Sorry. Uh, so, uh, talking about ads, sometimes our partners get more money from ads than from flights and bookings. It's quite weird, but, um, but that's true. So, we see that ECPM, so its cost per 1000 impressions, vary from $1 if you're talking about native ads in, uh, let's say, Russia to $40, we are talking about interstitial ads in Australia. Uh, so your, your final payout really depends on geos and volumes you have, of course. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, let's dig deeper into our latest version of our product. Um, Travel SDK consists of many screens. First of all, flight search form. While we are quite experienced in UI UX, I believe we've built a form which will convert users with the highest rate, so you can see the this form on your screen right now. Next screen is the waiting screen. Unfortunately, our engine needs some time to proceed your search request, but as you can see, we've fully redesigned the screen and uh, now it looks much more attractive than it was. So next, uh, search results. Um, by the way, I think you've mentioned that all screens have different color schemes. Um, that's right, uh, we've integrated four different color schemes into our app and made it extremely simple but powerful tool to switch between them and create your own schemes in a matter of minutes. Um, so I hope you, you will love this, guys. Um, next, filters. Uh, we've made really powerful filters, with the, which uh, actually looks and works like filters in our flagship app. Um, so, um, fly details. Um, well, uh, this green and red shim is the realest one. I think we'll need to replace it with something that looks more sexy. Uh, but finally, here it is. So, um, and the last white screen is browser where your customer can finally book, uh, book a flight. So, um, now I want to introduce you to something absolutely new. Finally, we've added a um, hotel search into our travel SDK. So your customers now can easily switch between flights and hotels using top bar in the bottom of the screen. Um, so generally we do support both platforms, iOS and Android, but unfortunately hotels are available only on iOS. Uh, but we'll try to ship an update for Android later this year. So on this slide you can see a search form, uh, which looks pretty much like flight search form in order to simplify the whole UX in your app. Uh, so next is wedding screen. As you can see, you can add an ad on this screen 
in order to monetize your users, but there's just an option, so you can switch as on or off as you wish. It's your choice. And so next, uh, search results screen, uh, visual and clear, nothing excessive, just main information in order to help your users, your customers, uh, to find the best hotel. Uh, so map with our powerful customization algorithm, which we delightly, uh, diligently work on for a while. Uh, so next, hotel details. Here we have hotel description, photos, location, amenities, uh, ratings and scores, reviews. So we've got a lot of information about hotel, which helps uh, customer, your customer find what he really needs right now, right here. So, and finally, browser. Well, um, nothing special here, just, just browser. browser. Um, <clears throat> so, um, we plan to release a new version of our channel on, on iOS in June, so just stay tuned, guys. Um, also, I want to give you some advice how to start getting installs in the App Store and Google Play. That's really important because the competition uh, in travel in app stores is really high right now. So um, um, there are many ways to get installs, but the um, but there is only one way, except of app store featuring, of course, to get um, those installs free. Uh, your app uh, should become highly discoverable in app store search. Um, so in order to make this dream come true, you need to invest time in ASO app store optimization. You need to optimize your um, and you need to optimize your app's page in order to be more discoverable on the app store. So how can you do that? First, um, I would recommend to choose your niche. Uh, that won't be so easy to promote general application because, as I have already mentioned, the, the competition is really high. So um, you will compete with apps like Jetrader, our app, Skyscanner, Kayak, Momondo, and hundreds of other apps. But if you choose a niche, the competition won't be so high. So you can make an app for low-cost flights only, or for people who live in some particular country, for example, and so on. Then, um, then you need to spend a lot of time working on your app's name, uh, on keywords, if we are talking about App Store, on description, if we are talking about Google Play. And yes, you need to do that for each country you want to success in. This is really important if you want to get big money of installs. Uh, so finally, you need to work, uh, of course, you need to work uh, on look and feel of your apps page in the store, icons, screenshots, uh, again, your apps name, all the stuff affects the conversion rate from app store page view to installation. So I want to show you some examples. <clears throat> on the left, you see a rather good page from my point of view, of course. This is our app, um, and we spend a lot of time on experiments trying to understand what works better. Uh, on the right, you see, well, um, not a bad page the page which can be improved for sure. So icons, screenshots, uh, well, let's be honest, they're not awesome. Uh, and I think you understand why. Um, so, okay, let's go further. Uh, of course, this is the basics. This topic is huge, and I can spend hours talking about that, about this uh, topic. So uh, here I've put, put down some useful blogs, Twitter accounts, and websites about app optimization. Also, I highly recommend you ASO course, uh, this course will definitely help you to improve your skills in ASO. So, uh, and also I've put down some useful tools to simplify the process of uh, ASO. Uh, yeah, sure, this webinar is recorded, no problem. Uh, okay, um, in the end of my section, I want to answer on some popular questions. I think some of these questions uh, you also may have. Uh, so, is our solution free? Yes, it's absolutely free for everyone, and of course, it will stay free. Uh, what, what about new travel SDK for Android? We do have Flights SDK for Android, uh, and as I've already said, we'll try to ship the version with hotels later this year. Uh, so, how much, uh, how much time a regular developer needs to build an app? Uh, well, it depends on how many things you want to change or customize. Uh, if you don't want to change to change, to change anything, it will um, take, I think, less than an hour to build an app if you're a good, experienced developer. So can you help me to build an app? Uh, well, 
uh, we can answer any questions and provide some help, but we can't do all the job for you if only you are not our big partner. Uh, so how can I add my language, my language into the app? Uh, there's no problem with that. You just can email us and we'll do that for you, no problem. Can I turn off all ads? Yes, sure you can. Uh, you can do that in our, own, in our new version of Travel SDK. Uh, so what software do we need to use uh, to build an app? Well, uh, you need to use Xcode for iOS application and Android Studio for Android application. Um, so what's what's on your roadmap? Uh, we do have a lot of cool stuff in our roadmap, like price calendar, car rentals, push notifications, RTL version for other countries, um, and so on. By the way, uh, by the way, if you have any ideas, feel free to email us, and maybe we can we can do some special features for you. Um, well, I think that's all. Um, I, I think I will ask you to send all questions you have, guys, to our support team. We'll answer on all of them shortly. I think this is the best way uh, to discuss some, some, some stuff. Uh, so thank you so much for your attention. And uh, Nikita? Yes, uh, thank you, Ivan. Thank you very much. Uh, so um, I think uh, both presentations will be available uh, on our blog with all uh, the links, uh, because links uh, was extremely useful, uh, as well uh, as uh, the video of this webinar.